sprints that get knocked over right at the end. Clone parts aren't always as good as you think, and, well, there can be such a thing as too cheap a filament. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 134. Let's get into it. Hey all, welcome back to the channel, and hey, if you're new here and you're struggling with 3D printing and getting your printers printing properly, we're here to help you. If you want, you can submit your fails to us so we can take a look at them and help you get back to printing with purpose. You can tag us on all the social media, slide into those DMs, or if you prefer, email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. Myself or Victoria will do a great job in helping you get those printers running properly. The first one here comes from Discord member John O, who, yeah, Easter Bunny fell over kind of right at the last minute, but it's not the only thing that we have going on here. It's a bamboo lab printer probably an x1 carbon it's a little tough to tell from the inside and we have a easter bunny print here that did fall over it looks like right at the ears it knocked the part off maybe some sort of spiral vase style print or something that was done at a relatively high speed bamboo does have that ai fail detection sometimes it works and hey other times it doesn't but of course you can remove it yourself the thing that we actually want to talk about here is not just dealing with your z hop because the z hop problem we also have an issue with our cooling down here at the bottom looking at the part here we've got this kind of bottom of an egg curved surface that is a tough surface for any 3d printer i do not care what manufacturer it is if they are filament based this is difficult you need a lot of cooling for this for it not to kind of look nasty the way that it does the ways around this are often to slow the printer down cool the nozzle down a little bit and give it all the cooling that you can. Being that this is a bamboo, it does have one of those auxiliary fans on the inside, which allows it to readily cool, well, one side of the part. And that's only really gonna hit, in this case would be the left side of the part and then the right side is not going to get anywhere near as much cooling but you might say grant what if we added a second fan it can work but it can also create some issues with vortices throughout the print so be careful about adding extra fans the best bet in a scenario like this is to just slow it down drop your nozzle temp a little bit so you're not overheating the filament by slowing it down and that should clean it up if you want just slow down your outer layers that might help enough to get through this. You could look at doing support material, but honestly, it's not going to help a thin part like this. Those are just going to have a tendency to warp. Cooling is where you need to be. Outside of Z-Hop, which is the obvious issue here, this bunny was not doing a great job hopping, and so it fell over. It does need some cooling down near its bottom. Next up from Twitter, we got the Dutch Glasswegian tagging us in a post from Bear3D Tech who said this print failed at some point, but it recovered somehow. I've had plenty of fails before, but this is the first time it kind of recovered on its own. So what happened here is your machine lost extrusion for some reason. Maybe there was a partial jam that it worked through. Maybe the filament was a little bit out of spec. We're going to see that later on as well. But whatever the clog or issue with extrusion was, it solved itself and the printer kept going. It might've taken a layer or two for it to build up enough material to start printing well, but we've seen this happen. It's a very common problem that we see with support material, especially your organic or tree supports where it can get knocked over, but then still recover because well, support finds a way. And well, sometimes your part does too. Unfortunately, in this case, this part is not usable and will have to be reprinted if it was a support thing that ended up fixing itself well hey you probably got lucky but in this user's case they didn't get lucky and there's not too much that you can do to solve this other than well make sure your filament is clean make sure that you don't have any issues in your actual filament pathway whether that's you know dirty Bowden tubes your extruder gears are either clogged up maybe they're worn down whatever it might be there are a multitude of reasons why this kind of thing could occur and they all kind of stem back to making sure that your filament path is nice and clean if it was bad filament for some reason and the machine eventually pulled its way through uh glad you got through that clog whatever brand of filament that is don't buy it again and of course, we're going to see that a little bit later as well. This one is an interesting one. It actually comes from my buddy 3D Printy, another content creator. You, you might know 3D Printy, actually. He makes 
absolutely amazing amazing parts that are just so much fun his ability to think outside of the box and come up with new things all the time is inspiring to me and if you don't know 3d printy we're gonna link to him in the description down below you gotta go check out 3d printy so thank you sir for sending that my way extra pets to zelda that is the resident cat with 3d Printy. Z layer wider than previous and next layer. Would anyone know why my layers aren't smooth on the outside of this lid? It really should be perfectly flat. I sliced this originally with two perimeters and printed it like this. Had read other blogs and people suggested more perimeters would fix it, so I printed it with four and got the exact same results. Not sure if it's a firmware thing or not for the Prusa MK3S. Printed on the MK3S with PLA, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 0.2 layers. So, this is pretty much the Benchy hull line. And this is an unfortunate issue that all comes down to designing. We can see here from 3D Printing, he says this is a good example of a print problem that is largely a design problem. This part from a twist lock box has a really bad Benchy hull artifact due to the thin lip that runs around the lid. I'm sure there are some slicing tweaks that could reduce the problem significantly, but I'm also sending this maker a revised lid second photo with walls that are two millimeters thicker to provide some infill padding first off uh amazing amazing customer service from 3d printy that's pretty freaking awesome and as we can see it is from his own models which i, I love this thank you 3d printy for submitting this this is like the core of what print fix friday is all about this guy is keeping an eye on users online and trying to help them out and sending them custom design things to help solve their problem. And I agree, I'm sure there are some slicing tweaks that could reduce the problem significantly, but it is ultimately a design problem. So, you know, hey, it's always cool when the designer also owns up to the problem. I love that. Good job, 3D Printy. Yeah, this is one of his twist lock boxes. They're wonderful little gift ideas for people. If you are designing for something like this and you have a really big flat layer like you see here, this is ultimately because you are slightly over extruding. If you do work at really dialing in that extrusion multiplier and your steps per millimeter, you can reduce this considerably. However, it is a known problem in pretty much every slicer out there right now that this is still a thing. And that is often because solid layers are extruded differently than infill and regular perimeters. I know that that sounds a little bit weird, but that is our understanding of how the Benchy hull line issue actually occurs and why issues like this occur as well. If you have a different understanding, I'd like to know because my understanding could be wrong. My understanding of this is that this is the way the slicers actually deal with the walls and not just, oh, it's your printer completely screwing up too. There are some things that you can do, but ultimately, this one, if you did make it a little bit thicker, like 3D Printy did, it should get rid of this problem 100%. And while, yes, you could come through and sand the part down and everything like that, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to sand the part down. They want parts that print well. So this is not a Prusa exclusive problem. In fact, I've seen it on pretty much every one of our machines in instances just like this. This is a 3D printing thing and it is a slicer thing. I know Prusa is working on solving it. I can imagine that Orca is also working on solving it. And whoever solves it first, I'm sure the others will just grab it because, well, hey, that's how open source works. And if you like open source, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. You know, helps the channel grow and doesn't cost you a dime. We appreciate that kind of thing. Next up, my buddy, Taylor, the Canuck creator, Nero 3 d says you get what you pay for. A user in my Discord purchased an E3D Revo nozzle off of AliExpress. How bad could it be? Well, does being an off-centered, leaky mess sound about right? Hey, I, I, I feel... I feel very, very called out right now. Also, there's a hole in the side where the knurling is. Let's take a look at these photos. Yeah, that, I mean, could be worse. Now that's a problem. One, clean your nails. We're going to take a photo, please. And thank you. But two, yeah, if you look, that's not in the center. I mean, it could be worse. It's not really well welded in place where the E3D one is not press fit to my knowledge. It's press fit, but then it's also welded to some extent. E3D has done some secret sauce with their Revo, and it is patented for reference. The, the Revo is not an open source solution. The cold side for Revo is, but the hot side is not. 
And if you are curious as to how they do it, it's patented, so you, you can you can search for it. And in fact, I'll link to them down below if you wanted to see that. You shouldn't have filament coming out there. You shouldn't have filament coming out there. Filament should only be coming out there. Yeah, you can see it's it's got a got a hole in the knurling. I'm not even certain how that occurs. There is no reason you should be cross drilling the nozzle for any reason whatsoever. Well, you can see it's got it's got some wiggles involved here, and yeah, this is one of those issues where I a hundred believe you get what you pay for. I recognize that the E3D Revo system is not cheap, but it did just go down in price considerably. So if you do want a Revo, now is the right time. The pricing has dropped as far as we are aware, permanently upwards of 40 plus percent so it makes getting into the revo ecosystem much more affordable and on top of that it means that you don't have to go to aliexpress for the clones anymore like please guys i get it with v6 it was a little bit different but revo is way more technically complicated we recently toured e3d we're working on editing through that video and we saw how revos are made in house and how pieces for revo is made in house and whew, especially those high flows man that is that is some really really fine machining that's needed it's worth spending the money to support the people that make the things that you like because if you don't support companies like e3d what is their reasoning for continuing to well revolutionize the industry they can just go back to selling the same stuff over and over again. And see, the companies that just clone their stuff will have nothing new to clone, and this industry starts to stagnate. It is best to support the original manufacturers when you can. I recognize if you're on a budget, it kind of is what it is, but support the real companies where you can. The clones are, well, a bit of a crapshoot. You win some, you lose some. But as far as I'm concerned, for what the price difference is now, I would be buying real well before I even start to look at something that is fake. This could have been bad. I'm gonna start with that in general. I've had good experience with Triple ID Max Filament. Upon opening an old spool today to get a print and done in that color, I luckily caught this foreign object being wedged inside of the filament. This could have been pretty bad. I'm not sure how this got past their QC and sensors on the machines. I thought the filament roll gets measured while being extruded to make sure the width is accurate and close to 1.75 millimeter measurements. I mean, this is a clog nozzle and a wasted print in the best case scenario. The brand is 3ID Max and the color is vanilla cream. Again, I'm not hating on the guys and will probably still buy their product. Okay. But this is bad on another level. I've emailed them and waiting for a reply. Have you had something similar to this before? Couple of things to note. There are people claiming that 3ID Max, GST, and Free Mover filament are all the same. I claim the same thing, and the owner of 3ID Max Filament corrected me in the comments, so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and say they're not the same. Now, this roll might have been from back when they were. At one point, as far as I was aware, they were the same company, and they have since split. So maybe this roll is back from when it was GST. I will tell you, GST Filament, it's cheap, but there's a reason for it. And QC issues like this, like, that is a piece of metal, that is a piece of brass likely that fell off from the nozzle that was extruding it or from the actual Archimedes screw that is used to push the raw pellets into the heater and then out through the nozzle. If you're wondering exactly how filament is made, we toured printed solid and made our own filament, which I like to call Jesse Silver Fox. And uh, for those that aren't aware, unfortunately, Jesse, the, the, the dog behind Jesse's filament from Printed Solid, has recently passed uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, condolences to Dave and Randolph, the entire Printed Solid team. Jesse is a flippin' legend when it comes to this industry. And if you do buy Printed Solid filament, go print yourself a Jesse dog. Tag Dave and Randolph on Twitter, and you can tell him I told you to do that because... Um, you heard it here. I still think this should be called Silver Fox, David. Back to 3ID Max here. This should have been caught. 
Most filament manufacturers use at least one laser measuring device, whether that is to check diameter, ovality, both. This is neither. Printed solid also has a tube. This tube is where the filament goes through. It's the last line of defense. That tube is right before the filament goes onto the spool. And if something gets past all of their safety checks, that tube will stop it. That tube is like 1.8 millimeters in diameter. And if anything is bigger than that, it will clog the tube. It makes a huge mess. It definitely didn't happen to me. Nope. Definitely didn't happen to me. Uh, but thankfully, it's not that big of a deal. It's easy to fix, but still, this kind of thing shouldn't happen. This is bad QA and QC. And I don't know if this is a recent enough spool that 3ID Max is actually running their own filament. I would not recommend buying from them again. If you buy filament from a company and you get foreign objects like this in your filament, do not buy from them. I don't care how cheap the filament is. At the end of the day, guys, filament is so affordable for how much money you spend on your printers and how much money your time is worth. If you had to spend an hour trying to figure out what went wrong here, that is $15 on the low end of what you should be making per hour. That means that you might as well have just bought a good spool of filament from the beginning. Printed Solids Jesse PLA is 20 bucks or so a kilo. Polymaker's filament is like, what, 24 to $30 a kilo, give or take. Tons of other brands on Amazon that are in that, you know, 15 to $30 range. And by and large, they're all good. Stop trying to get the cheapest stuff on the planet and you won't generally run into issues like this. But apparently this is such a problem that, uh, yeah, a lot of comments are basically saying, you know, don't buy it, buy different filament, looks like this, looks like that. Bold of you to assume any QC was done. It's bad news bears. Don't buy crappy filament. And if you get an experience like this, you better reach out to the manufacturer and allow them some time to at least try to make it right for you. There are other options out there. It's not always about being the cheapest, about making sure that you have consistent quality products, especially if you're gonna be using it to sell to people. Even if you're making it for your own stuff, you don't want random crap like this. This is something that absolutely should have been caught in the filament. Buy from reputable manufacturers. I understand that not everyone is gonna be able to afford Prusa Mint all the time, one of the more expensive filaments on the market. I'm not saying you have to spend 40 bucks a roll, but when you spend 40 bucks a roll, you also have that pretty much guarantee that it's going to be good. When you're spending sub 10 bucks a roll, I think you're rolling the dice. And sometimes it's not a nat 20, it's a nat one. Thankfully though, this was not that far in the spool. So it was readily caught before it caused a problem. Technically, if you wanted, I cut a meter out, half a meter before and half a meter after I'd cut that out of the filament. And then I would start the spool again. If you need this color and you have the faith that this was a one-time deal, go ahead. But me personally, I don't know if I would risk it. But I'd love to know your thoughts if this has ever happened to you down below. And if it has, what have you done? And if it hasn't, what the heck would you do? Would you ever buy from this company again? I'd be curious. And you know who doesn't have some splaining to do? It's all of our channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you do want to kick a couple of bucks into that creator fund, you can do so. Links are in that description below. Costs you very little and you get behind the scenes access. And oh yeah, the first episode of the Catting Room Floor is coming out. And if you don't know what that is, stay tuned because it will be for our channel member supporters, Patreon, PayPal, and all of that only so if you're interested in that hey a couple of bucks gets you that video when it does come out it's going to be a lot of fun but that is all i have for you all today below me will be the entire print Picks friday series and right next to that will be our tour of printed solid it's a long video but it is absolutely worth it go give your pets just a little more love than normal tonight you cat owners get the churus and everything out for them dogs give them an extra treat or an extra snack go on a longer walk take a little bit of time out of your day to be deliberate about spending time with your pets tonight in honor of jesse i'm sure david would absolutely appreciate that and i would too so stay safe out there don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome.